Hello my friends, welcome back to the channel. Three things I want to tell you before we start. First of all, I just got a shock. I started to film and somebody was knocking on my door and I opened the door and there was this guy from the local uh, Bergen's newspaper and he asked me questions about if I heard something last night. And apparently in this area, quite close to my house, uh, somebody stabbed somebody. Yeah, <laughs> crazy. <laughs> Welcome to the hood, I guess. It just shows that things happen everywhere, even in so considered the safest country uh, in the world called Norway. But yeah, that was a little bit shocking. And to be honest, that's like the second like criminal thing that I'm experiencing in my life. Like the first one was while I was still a kid living in Latvia and somebody literally stabbed my neighbor yeah so <laughs> i guess my obsession with the uh, true crime maybe comes somewhere from there it's sad it's sad the guy is actually still alive he's in the hospital so my prayers for him to stay alive that's so sad second part i want to tell you thank you so much for your feedback uh on my previous video about norwegian witch trial do watch that if you haven't seen that because it would be interesting. It would be like a bridge to this today's video. And thirdly, uh, if you're wondering what the crap I'm watching right now, who's that girl just like blah, 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 blah. Well, welcome to my channel. My name is Gita, Gita Lighthouse. I like to tell stories. In general, I like to tell stories about the country where I moved to. Uh, it's Norway, if you didn't understand it by now. I usually like to tell stories that are not so popular in general and not so many people know that. Yet, it's interesting to know them. According to the previous video and how much you loved it, you creeps like witches, do you? Yeah, so today's video most probably is gonna be a dessert for you. And speaking about desserts, I actually picked up the idea from you guys and I'm gonna try to tell you a story while I'm cooking. Uh, anyways, just a heads up. Uh, before we start cooking, I'm super clumsy and uh, there might be knives involved while cooking and which means there's a possibility I could cut myself. So just telling you because yesterday I was cooking and I got myself burned. So you know that you've been warned. So today's story and today's episode. Oh my, let me tell you this. We're going to continue about witches, as I said. And yes, dude, Norwegians not only had Vikings and Norse mythology with different gods like Loki and Odin, they also had some witches. And I know you might be asking, how do you know that they really existed? Well, the story that I'm about to tell you today is actually documented. So it's not a legend, it's true. When I'm saying the story has been documented, I'm literally referring to a real document. It's a 1959 book. It's written by uh, Rosal Hope Robbins and the book's name is Encyclopedia of Witchcraft and Demonolo De ah! Demonology. <laughs> and thanks to this story, actually uh, many of the witch hunt and witch trials uh, became uh, popular internationally and that's why we also know that there were uh, witch hunts and uh, witch trials and burns uh, happening also in Norway. I think I should take a bigger knife, it's failing. So today's story that I'm specifically, I have a big knife, careful, about a woman named Elizabeth Nippan. And uh, if I'm, when I'm saying she was a witch, I'm actually saying that she was accused of being witch. Lisbeth was born and baptized as Lisbeth Peder's daughter, and she was born in a place uh, called Hollandet, which is around 40 kilometers southwest from Trondheim. From what is known, uh, Lisbeth also had a sister, and uh, it is alleged that a little bit later on, also her sister was accused of being a witch. So. It was like, yeah, why not? Let's accuse both of the sisters and just ruin the family completely. Why not, right? Anyways, there are no details, uh, but apparently Lisbeth fell in love with this Norwegian guy. His name was Ule Nippan. And apparently he was kind of like a wealthy man because he was not only a farmer, but uh, he was also an innkeeper, which meant that he was in charge of managing an inn. They were living their peaceful family life and um, uh, it is documented they had uh, four children, 
uh, three daughters and one son. Uh, the daughters' names were Merit, Anne, and Ingeborg, and the son's name was Peder. Apparently, it was in to honor uh, Lisbeth's uh, father. Year 1670. That year brought literal hell in their family. And it is important to know that during that time, it's gonna be a little bit noisy. During that time, uh, Lisbeth and her husband Ule were in their 60s already. So they were a little bit like elderly people. And it is said that some kind of random person went to the court and said something bad about them. Like, oh, they're being quite witchy, doing some witchcraft. And both of them, they were not okay with that. So they went to the court, they filed in a defamation case and they said like, no, that's not true. I want those people to say sorry and uh, take responsibility for their accusations. As a result, the defamation case that they filed uh, against those people who were telling their witches, uh, it turned against them. People from the court actually visited their home. So they came in to ask some questions to understand if they're really witches. And uh, they also asked them to come to court because they started a big, big witch trial. Actually, this witch trial for Ule and Lisbeth lasted for six long months. It uh, was lasting from the March until the September of 1670. And so, what actually triggered somebody to talk BS about Lisbeth and Ule? Most specifically, more about Lisbeth. If there is a noise, my onion is cooking. So, I was also curious to know uh, what triggered all of that rumor. And let me tell you this. So, uh, according uh, to the witnesses, Lisbeth was actually helping people and healing them. So she was working as a healer and happened since 1640. So she has been doing that for 30 years and nobody accused her of anything. So there it is, she's a healer. And honestly, I don't see anything bad about that. Like, like if a person knows something and she can help somebody feel better or recover from injuries, there's nothing bad about being a healer. And I don't see why should someone accuse her. Literally, why? It was said that people came to her with different illnesses and she would help them. There was somebody, a witness, who said that in those sessions when people came to her to seek for help for different reasons, she was using not only Christian methods, but also black arts. I guess that's the name for black magic. And also uh, she was using some uh, natural medicine, which we all know that they don't like natural medicine. It all comes from the Satan. One of the methods that they said she was using and that literally uh, notified that she's a witch was called reading in a salt. So yeah, I googled it and apparently it's some kind of like a ritual and spell thing. I think you have to talk into the salt or is it just like my interpretation? If you know something, you can just tell me. But Elizabeth, during the court, she didn't actually deny that uh, she's using some kind of healing words during her sessions when there was a patient with her. She actually uh, cited some of them in the court and uh, those words that she was using, the healing words, were actually documented in the case and I read them. I'm not gonna read them right now. I mean superstitious, although I do believe that she wasn't a witch. But the thing is that all of the words in that verse, they involved Lord and God. And at the end, she actually said, Amen. There was not a clue, not a word about Satan or devil. The thing is that people actually, uh, literally in the court said that after they had those sessions uh, at Lisbeth's house, she helped them. And I think everyone should be happy about that. So no more further questions, Your Honor. But no, I believe it's just my opinion that maybe somebody went to her to ask for help for some kind of illness or whatever and she didn't manage to heal it because apparently even nowadays with all the science that we have with all the medicine, you cannot heal all the problems. So maybe somebody was kind of like angry that she didn't help and they was like, all right, I'm gonna accuse her of being a witch because she didn't help me. She's a witch, she hates me and she just wanted to revenge me, I think could be like that. So taking into account all of that, I don't believe that there's anything suspicious about uh, Lisbeth's activities. How do you think? I mean, especially those who are religious and know more about religion. Can you tell me please, like if a person uses God and amen, is there like any chance that that person could be involved with Satan? I mean, she could pretend, but what was the reason? I mean, she was living like normally her life and 
killing people. But then the court hearing uh, had another new turn. They learned that Lisbeth was actually charging for her services. So whenever somebody came in as a patient, they had to pay something. So money, money, money must be funny. Why am I using that one as a mic? The prosecutors were like, all right, nothing bad about taking money for your services, but what if, what if she was putting different spells on people and animals so that they get sick and come to her and she could just earn money? Apparently, after they actually put it out, this uh, possibility that she's doing this, people were saying like, whenever someone got sick or an animal got sick, yeah, that was Lisbeth. That was her. Let's just take a moment and do a face palm for that. And let me tell you this, another face palm is approaching and I'm not gonna do it with a knife, don't worry. <laughs> he had a big mouth and whenever he was like going out somewhere and somebody said something bad about him or his wife, he had like this kind of way of getting angry very quickly. So for example, the conversation would be like, oh, Ula, you're a bad man. Like your wife is a witch. And he would like, yeah, shut up, you stupid man. I wouldn't talk so much if I was you. Remember who my wife is and what she can do with you. Yeah, moment for a second face palm. This did not really help, Ule, did not help. How don't you understand it? But anyways, in the courtroom, Lisbeth and Ule, whenever they were like, asked some questions and there was an interrogation, they always said that, no, we are not doing any witchcraft. We're just victims of some stupid gossip. And now, let me just tell you that the third face palm is approaching. Be ready for it. I'm just buttering my way up for it. The parish priest, I'm just gonna read those names because I'm stupid with Norwegian names. His name was Ole Menstein and the bailiff, his name was Hans Eversten Meyer. They tried to persuade the couple to confess. Nothing new about it. It happens all the time with witch hunts. What they did, they both uh, took Ole and Lisbeth in, in a prison. They tried to torture them, but still both of them didn't admit any guilt or showed any remorse even after they were tortured heavily. And of course, who would have imagined a proper witch trial without a proper torture? Uh, there is one dumb thing that happened. Like, they torture them, they didn't confess, and without the confession they cannot punish them. They couldn't burn any of them or, I don't know, behead them. So they really needed uh, this uh, kind of confession, but they didn't do that. So without being able to deliberate and punish them, they came up with a brilliant, and I'm saying brilliant, idea. As I said, there is a third face palm moment and this is happening right now, so be prepared. <sighs> they said in the court that they cannot get a proper uh, confession from Lisbeth and also nothing from Ule, but they cannot get this proper confession because Lisbeth has this very, very close relationship to devil that prevents her to confess. Wow. Let me just do it. So they still find a way how to make her guilty even without confessing. Did you do the face palm? Because literally you need to do that at this moment. This is ridiculous. Oh, it's getting really hot here. I put all of the precious things in the oven. I took my hair up. I know it looks like a bird's nest, but that's the only thing I could come up with. Sorry, no beautiful things out here. Uh, so to end the story, uh, the judge of this case, his name was, again, I'm reading William Knudsen. He said that Lisbeth is found more guilty than Ule, uh, so Lisbeth being the witch and Ule just an accomplice. So Lisbeth will have the higher punishment, which is burning alive, typical, and her husband, Ule, the accomplice, will have a little bit milder uh, punishment. And by saying milder, you do understand that I'm ironic because 
his punishment was beheading. Sources differ about where exactly Elizabeth was punished. Uh, some sources say that she was punished uh, at the Archbishop's Palace. Uh, some sources also say that it was done in a fish market. And then there's also the third option about uh, her being punished by the uh, town's gate. Uh, yeah, whatever the case, uh, they killed her because I do believe that she wasn't a witch. She was doing maybe some like pagan things, but uh, she wasn't a witch. So just let me know in the comments what are your thoughts about this case and do you believe that she was a witch? I mean, that's the main question here. But let me just add this and I think Norwegians are quite weird about that. So they like to make monuments and sculptures to remember different creepy things in their past because you know remember in the previous video they made this whole museum and uh, for uh, the witch trial I was describing yeah just to commemorate that yeah here it's also the case so they made a sculpture they revealed it in the year 2005 just to commemorate the events happening to Lisbeth Nippan and the creepiest thing is that this sculpture was revealed by Nippang Primary School in Leinstrand yeah, and there's also a road uh, named after uh, Elizabeth Nippan in Trondheim. Now it's your turn. Tell me your opinion about this case and also share with this video with whoever would be interested in watching it. Like, comment, interact with this video. I would be really happy to see your opinions and your likes and subscriptions and pressing that notification bell really helps the development of my channel. As you saw, I was a little bit struggling with the mic because it's not wireless, so I was like, hmm, holding it here and then putting somewhere. I do believe that the sound will not be perfect, but at this point I invested in my lights that you are seeing right now. I have this huge ring now and I cannot afford everything. Uh, so maybe if you want to support me, support me with your interactions with this video because it will help me to sooner get monetized because I'm not. Check it, I'm not. I still miss 500 subscribers. <laughs> Sorry, language lady. And thank you for everything you're doing for me. It just makes me happy because I love to be here and tell you stories and make those shorts. See you next time.